Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Pastor Mitch. Hello, London. Oklahoma, Cheshire, UK. Good morning. What do you see? God is good. We're going to start in 30 seconds. Go ahead and share this with your friends. Invite your followers. Hello, hello. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. I thank God for every day, don't you? He's good. He's good every day, not just on Fridays. The world says, thank God it's Friday. We say, thank God you woke me up this morning. It's going to be a mega day. It's going to be a radical day. It's going to be the day of all days, the best day yet. Every day, better and better. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Here we go. Jennifer LeClaire here, author of our devotional, Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. Senior leader at the Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida and founder of the Ignite Network. Today's devotion titled, I Want to Give You More. What an appropriate devotion for today. I want to give you more. Here is what I heard the Lord say. I want, I watch you as you give, give, give. You give willingly to your workplace, to your family, and to the household of faith, and even to those who are not part of the household of faith. You give generously of your time, your money, and your heart, says God. I love it. And I want to give more I want to give you more to give. Receive from me now the grace to keep on giving. As long as your giving is motivated by love, you will always have more to share with others. 
that's a good word. We need to be givers, hallelujah. If you're not a giver, if you're not one who gives, 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 you need to start being one who gives, 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 because you cannot outgive God. Whatever you pour out to others, he will give back to you magnified, hallelujah, multiplied exponentially. Today's scripture references 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, Galatians 6 and 10, and Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And the prayer starter for today, I know you love a cheerful giver, and I love to give cheerfully. Thank you for giving me seed to sow. Please give me more and more so that I can reach out to more people with your love, grace, and your provision. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are a giving God. Hallelujah. You are a giving God, and we cannot outgive you. We're so grateful that you give us grace. We're so grateful that you gave us salvation. You gave us life. You died to give us life, your life, the Zoe life on the inside of us, the very life of God. You've given us the very faith of God, your own faith, the measure of faith. You've given it to us. You've given us your spirit. you give us wisdom. You pour it out upon us liberally. You are a giving God. You give us revelation. Hallelujah. You give us uh, uh, strategies for the battle. Praise God. You give us seed to sow. You give us kind words to share. You give us prophecies to release. Oh God, you are a giving God. And we thank you, Lord, that we could never, ever, ever, no matter how much we give, no matter how much we pour out, no matter what we go above and beyond to do. You have gone above and beyond, way above and beyond, way, way above and beyond, way, way, way above and beyond. And we thank you, Jesus, that you're so gracious. You're such a giver. You're such a lover. You're such a, a dispenser of kindness and goodwill. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we're not going to complain anymore about what we don't have, but we're going to be grateful for what we do have. Oh, that attitude of gratitude it unlocks things. It unlocks things. It unlocks things. Jesus, how we talk about the Isaiah 22, 22 key that unlocks things. It opens doors and closes doors. I thank you, Lord, that Thanksgiving, it unlocks things too. You've given us the keys to the kingdom. You've given us that Isaiah 22, 22 key. You've given us the prayer of faith to pray, the prayer of agreement to pray. You've given us Thanksgiving. Your word tells us to be anxious for nothing, for nothing, not to be anxious for anything ever. Oh, not to allow ourselves to be anxious for anything ever, but let our request be known to God with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. When we pray, we're going to thank you. When we begin to pray and lift up our petitions to heaven, we're going to thank you. We're going to thank you because we know when we pray anything according to your will that we're going to have that thing. What do you see? I see blessings being poured out from the windows of heaven that we cannot even contain because we've been faithful in our giving. We've been faithful in our tithing and God is a God who keeps promises. He is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. What do I see? I see blessings. I see financial blessings. I see money coming down from heaven to those who have been faithful to give and sow where God has told them to give and sow. I thank you Lord. I thank you Lord that whatever we need in this season you're going to pour it out as we've poured it out to others. I thank you, Lord, that your, your, your spiritual laws, they're true. They're true. They're true. They work for whosoever will. They work for everybody. They even work for the unbelievers. Oh God, we see that we reap what we sow. 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 We, even the unbelievers reap what they sow. You are no respecter of persons. You don't show partiality when it comes to spiritual laws. I thank you, Lord, that us in the kingdom, we in the kingdom of all people, we should be those who give, who sow kind words, who sow our time into people's lives, who sow our prayers of intercession on behalf of those who are struggling, even the persecuted church. I thank you, Lord, that you would use us, really use us. Oh, we like to say, oh my goodness. Oh, how we like to say, oh, we're the hands and feet of Jesus. But then we put our hands and we twiddle our thumbs and we put our feet up on the autumn 
them and, and kick back and watch horrifying television shows that defile our ear gates and defile our eye gates. I break that curse in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, that time-wasting curse, that, that voice of the enemy that says, just kick back and relax and watch what you want to. God will I don't know who I'm talking to. Probably half y'all going to sign off now because this is the conviction of the Lord. Jesus, would you help us to keep our eye gates pure? Would you help us to keep our ear gates pure? Would you help us to set a guard over our mouth, mouth, Jesus? Would you help us, Lord, not to sit idly by and watch as the world goes to hell and just sit back and watch TV, being puffed up on our pillow, eating ice cream and potato chips? God, would you help us, Lord, to, yes, was, yes, yeah, I hear some religious spirit saying, I get to relax if I want to. Yes, you get to relax if you want to. God wants you to rest. God wants you to relax. God wants you to have a fun time and a good time with your family and to laugh and be merry. Hallelujah. But he doesn't want you, want you watching pornography and he doesn't want you watching a violent graphic murder and all kind of manner of wickedness and feeding your spirit on a bunch of trash that the enemy inspired and created to deceive the masses. We need to turn off the TV sometimes and have a prayer meeting. We need to turn off the internet sometimes and begin to worship the Lord. Yes, you should relax. Yes, you should rest. But should you consume trash? Would you go to a trash dump and eat food that was rotten? No, you wouldn't do it. So why do we watch these things of the world, these worldly things? Jesus, would you help us? Oh, I'm sure people are going to get mad at me today. I don't care because I've been delivered from you. I ain't got no fear of man. I'm not scared of the devil. I'm sure not scared of you. Praise God. Somebody needs to get offended to the point that they get delivered. If you're offended by what I'm praying, if you're offended by what I'm saying, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, because it's the first step to your deliverance. You know better than to watch that trash on TV. Come on now. You know better than to watch that all that sex and trash and filth on HBO. You know better than that. God wants to use you. He wants to release your prophetic voice. He wants to use you to heal the sick. He wants to use you to cast out devils. He wants to use you to preach the gospel. And he needs you to pull yourself aside. Separate yourself from among the great whore of Babylon. That financial system that causes you to slave away. That causes you to work yourself to death. Come on now. I hit the entertainment mountain. Now come on. Let's hit that financial mountain. Come Come on now. We are not going to be slaves to mammon. We cannot serve. I don't know what's gotten into me today. You know what? I know what it is. It's called the Holy Ghost. We have got to stop acting like the world. We have got to stop praying like the world. The prayers that only they pray whenever they're desperate. They don't ever pray to God until all of a sudden something bad happens and now they're praying to God. You know what? I'm glad they're praying to God, but they need to know the God to whom they pray. Oh, all of this mammon, this mammon inspired direction in people's life, even in the church. I break that cycle in our lives where we would even be tempted, where we would even hear the voice. God, make us deaf to the voice of mammon. Ah, Make us deaf to the voice of mammon. We're not going to look to mammon and say, may I sow, Mr. Mammon? Oh, you great devil of, of, of mammon, you great demon of money. May I please sow something into the ministry? May I please, Mr. Mammon, you great devil of mammon, may I please go into a mission trip. Oh, you know what? We're not going to ask mammon permission any longer. We serve the Lord God Almighty. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The silver belongs to him. The gold belongs to him. He himself has given us the power to create wealth, to establish his covenant in the earth. Not so that we might have so much extra that we just stored up, stored up, stored up, stored up, stored up. There's nothing wrong with having savings, but dear God, there was a man in the Bible and he had so much. He said, tear down all my barns and let's build bigger barns so I can put all my riches there. I, he was rich. He was stinking, filthy, overflowing rich. He had so much. He, he tore down. He didn't just build a new barn. 
That's poor stewardship. He didn't just build an extra barn to store his stuff in. He tore down the old barns. He, I don't need that old tiny little barn anymore. I need me. I need to get me a bigger barn. He tore down the old barns and he built a new barn. And the Lord said, you foolish, wicked man. Don't you know that tonight your soul will be required of you? We don't leave anything behind. We can't, I mean, we can't take it. We can't take it with us. God, would you help us to be kingdom stewards, to be uh, financial stewards? Because he who is faithful over little will be made ruler over much. We're not going to serve that spirit of mammon. We're not going to serve that spirit of mammon. We're not serving it. I want to pray for de supernatural debt cancellation at the end of this broadcast. Some of you are in bondage to mammon. You're in bondage to that wicked financial Babylonian system. You're in bondage. Let me tell you something. I don't owe no man nothing except what to love him. I'm not about to go into debt. I'm not about to go into debt. I said I'm not about to go into debt for anything or anybody. Praise God. We are going to contend to get out of debt. This is going to be a theme I'm going to stick on as long as the Holy Ghost leads me to. But I really, 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 really feel that we need to continue to press into debt that freedom there's always a temptation see God if God wants you to have something he'll provide the means for you to get it he's not called you to go into debt now there's nothing wrong with having debt on your house and essentially I know in the system of the world we live in you keep where are you gonna live I get that. But I'm talking about all this stuff that we have to have. We just got to have it. We got to have it. And so listen, I don't mean to get preachy with you today, but God wants to set somebody free. It's okay to have stuff. But as long as the stuff does not have you, praise God, it's okay to have really nice fancy cars. God doesn't begrudge you of having a nice car and nice clothes. But does it have you? Does it have your heart? If you could not have it anymore, would you just freak out? We need to get free from debt. We need to get free from the fear of man. We need to get free from this, 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 this entertainment system of the world that is polluting our prophetic. Jesus, would you help us today? 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 Y'all still there? I'm looking. Did y'all hang up on me? You know this is not my typical flow. What happened to me? What's going on? What is it? What is it? I think the Holy Ghost is trying to wake us up today. Hallelujah. I got on the broadcast. I don't, I don't have any deep revelation or prophetic word or spiritual teaching. I said, Lord, what do you have for the people? Apparently this is what he's got. He wants to set you free from the entertainment system of the world that has held you in bondage to lies and that is swaying your emotions it's playing on your emotions it's manipulating your emotions it's causing lust to rise up in some of your hearts even these trashy romance novels dear God would you deliver the women from the trashy romance novels today in Jesus name would you help us God there is therefore no condemnation this is not condemnation this is God setting people free this is a wake up call I said it's a wake up call this morning you know this is not what we normally do we're normally warring for things and you know what today we're warring for our own souls we're warring for the freedom in our finances we are not going to pollute the spiritual gifts within us by defiling our eye gates and our ear gates with trash on TV trash in books trash in magazines oh come on Jesus would you help us set us free God we worship you we thank you that you love us so much that you bring us a word of correction sometimes you love us so much that you bring us a word of warning sometimes that we might escape the snare of the fowler that we have fallen into because we didn't think it was anything we thought it was harmless we didn't think it was a big deal we thought it was a light thing but we will not be uh, like Ahab and, and, and follow the sins of Jezebel and continue Consider it to be a light thing. God, convict our hearts today of those things we watch, those things we read, those things we give we, we give our ear to, those things that we set our sights on. Lord, if it's not if it's not worthy of you, God, would you help us to, to look up again, to look back at you again, not to be ensnared, God, by the ways of the world, the spirit of the world. No man can, can love the world and love God too. The spirit of the world is what the scripture refers to. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But this spirit of the world, we cannot be friends with the world without having enmity toward God. 
We thank you, Lord. We will set ourselves apart. Help us, Jesus. We will set ourselves apart. Help us, help us, Jesus. We will set ourselves apart. Help us, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your great love and your great grace that rests upon us even now. All of those who have said yes, all of those who have said, God, yes, help me. Help me, Lord. I, I see the grace of God being poured out upon you. I, I can't even describe what I'm seeing. It's almost like bubbles in the spirit. It's almost like little containers, little little packages. It's not a bubble, but that's the best thing I can compare it to. What I'm seeing is just a, a grace being poured out on you. All of those who said, yes, Lord, I, I want to use my time more wisely, Jesus. I want to use my money more effectively, Jesus. I want to, to, to spend uh, my life uh, doing things that glorify you, Jesus. I just see mega grace, radical grace. What do I see? I see grace falling upon you. Why? Because God gives grace to the humble. And if you're still on this broadcast at this point, you've not gotten offended and hung up. If you've not gotten offended and begun to curse me under your breath, if you've not gotten offended, let me tell you something. The Lord is pouring mega grace out upon you. He's pouring out radical grace upon you that you will be able to resist the enemy. You will be able to resist the temptations that come against you. I know what it's like to, to have temptations come against me. And I know what it's like to overcome them. I know how to resist. the. You know what? It's not a sin for temptation to come upon you. It's only a sin if you fall into it. And the good news is if you fall into it, you can run back to God. You can get out of it. Father, we thank you today. Hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We thank 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 you and we praise you. We thank you and we praise you. You love us so much that you've confronted our hearts today. You don't want us in bondage to anything. You don't want us in bondage to, to, to money. You don't want us in bondage uh, to pornography and, and all of these horrific entertainment systems that have polluted our, our, our minds and try to pollute our spirits. I'm telling you, God has such a great plan for your life. He wants to use you as a miracle worker. The Bible says these signs follow those who believe in my name. They'll cast out devils, speak with new tongues. Jesus said, heal the sick, raise the dead. He's talking to you. He wants to use you to do miraculous things for his kingdom. Yes, 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 you're right. I see somebody said about the children. Many of you, it's not even you. It's not you. And I'm sure I'm probably not even talking to most of you. It's just a few of you maybe on here. But you know what? It's the children. It's some of you, it's your children. And you're standing in the gap for the children. So let's stand in the gap for the children right now. Father, I thank you. We ask you, Lord, to protect our children from the perversion of the world system. God, would you protect our kids? No, whether, whether they're tiny babies or being indoctrinated. It, it, uh, by the ways of the world or whether they're grown in their 40s and they're still not serving you God because the seed of perversion a seed of deception was planted in their minds by mammon by entertainment by one of these uh, 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 these scandalous uh, 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 propagators of, of evil in, in one of the seven mountains of influence God we lift up our children to you and we say Lord bring them home rescue them from darkness God break the deception off their minds in Jesus name God help them Lord to spit out the bait of Satan that bait that alluring bait that temptation to chase after fame and fortune God would you help us Lord would you help us Jesus Lord help us help us to continue praying for our children and for our family that have fallen into the trap of covetousness and greed like Gehazi Elisha's servant when Elisha healed Naaman of the lepers he said go dip in the river seven times yes I, I heard that when I was reading in my Bible this morning when I was reading the story of Naaman and the Lord told me that many of many in the body of Christ they have spiritual leprosy and they need to go dip in the river seven times and for each time they dip another layer of something will fall off they'll be delivered from this that and the other thing the Lord told me this for my own self about that that that, that, that 13 years ago I was in the mountains of North Carolina I was in the uh, the, the smoky mountains up on top of a mountain and there was a a, a, a 
stream there, and it was a deep, like a river or stream kind of thing, and it was freezing cold, and I dipped my toe in the water, and it was so cold, and it took my breath away, and the Lord said, dip in this river seven times, and I will deliver you from seven uh, seven uh, attitudes, misperceptions, and other things that are that are hindering you and stopping you, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, Lord, that water is, is, is like 35 degrees, and he said, dip in the river, how bad do you want to be free, and that's what happened with, with Naaman, he was a Ended when the Lord, when the when he got the prophetic word of the Lord, he said, uh, uh, "Isn't there another body of water? This is the worst water. Israel has the worst water." He was offended by here's oh shakata. This is all coming full circle. Mashte, He was offended. Naaman was offended with the word of the Lord. Some of you this morning, maybe you're offended with the word of the Lord. Maybe you got offended with me. I hope you didn't, because I'm I'm praying what the Lord tells me to pray. But if you did, you know what? That the Lord will have to, to get with you and help you. But Naaman was offended. He was offended. He was offended. And, and his, his servant said to him, Naaman, if, he, if the prophet had told you to go do some great thing to be healed, would you have done it? So Naaman humbled himself. And he received his healing. He dipped in that river seven times and he came out. And he was, his skin was like a boy. And he tried to give the prophet a reward. And the prophet said, no. But Gehazi had greed and covetous his heart. He ran after Naaman. He ran after Naaman and he said, give me uh, some silver, two talents of silver and two changes of clothes. And he went back to Elisha uh, going as if nothing happened. Elijah said, where were you? What were you doing? He said, well, I went here and there. Elijah said, didn't my heart go with you when you went to Naaman and received a reward? And the, and the leprosy of Naaman will remain on you and your generations forever. Because of that greed. See, greed is wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked. And our children are subject to all of this wickedness in the world. Perversion. Greed. Slander. Lust. All of these things. So we thank you today, Lord. We thank you today that we're walking in freedom. I decree and declare our children are being raised up in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you help me to pray as led by your spirit. I'm not basing my prayer this morning off your comments telling me what to pray. I appreciate your help. But sometimes I don't look at the comments because I don't like to get distracted. Actually, 90% of the time, I don't look at the comments because I cannot get distracted by suggestions on what I should pray. But I appreciate your comments. I appreciate them. It adds to the community of prayer. So keep commenting. Just know that it, I'm not ignoring you. I'm not ignoring you. I just can't look at your comments and pray because I'll get distracted because many of you have so many good things to share. And my soul will be distracted and I'll begin to pray that which... You're commenting about, and I can't. I have to stay true to the Lord's leading. But I thank you for your comments. I thank you, Lord, that you keep our children safe, no matter what age they are. Deliver them from evil. Deliver them from all the world systems, that spirit of the world, the spirit of the age. We thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Even our children's children's children, who are not even yet born to this world, we lift up a prayer for them this morning. We ask you to protect them. Our children's children's children, those ones that may be born even after we leave the face of the earth and go on to glory to be in your presence, God. There's synergy of the ages. We know that prayer never dies. So we lift up our children's children's children and the generations after them. And we say, God, preserve and guard them in your grace, in your love and in your mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I like that. Praise God. God is good. I've gone way over in prayer time. I want to share with you something uh, that uh, my apostle shared with me last night on the Intercessors for Florida prayer call. And I also want to pray over debt cancellation this morning. And so I wanted to do these two things. I want to share with you about, about warring for what belongs with you, to you. 
I want to set you free in that regard, and I want to pray over the debt cancellation. So this is the time when I'm going to start looking at the comments. So if I'm forgetting something, please help me, ladies and gentlemen, with the with the uh, announcements. Hallelujah. Listen, if you want to sow a seed today into the ministry, especially as we're pressing into this debt cancellation, I want to invite you to do that. We're going to pray to we're going to pray in a minute to to war for what belongs to us. I'm going to break this poverty spirit. And we're going to believe for supernatural debt cancellation. Amen. And we're going to do that in just a minute. If you, and I've got a couple of other announcements, but just bear with me. We're not going to go over time. Listen, if you want to sow a seed, you can go to jenniferleclair.org slash donate. jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You can sow a seed there. You can become a partner there if you're in the U.S. Pretty soon you'll be able to become a partner internationally there. jenniferleclair.org slash donate. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. Uh, you can also use PayPal. PayPal.me slash JenniferLeClaire. PayPal.me slash JenniferLeClaire. You can sow a seed there. It works well for internationals. You can also remind me about the witchcraft thing in a minute. Um, you can also uh, use text to give. Text the word pray, P R A Y, to 754 701 2161. Edie Allen, would you message me today about e checking email? I have a list for you, and I cannot remember to send it to you. I've been just underwater with TV and media this week. 754-701-2161. Text the word PRAY. You can also, you can also uh, use uh, the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 3953, Hallandale Beach, Florida, 33008. P.O. Box 3953. Hallandale Beach, Florida, 33008. We're going to be pressing into the supernatural debt. Now, I have an anointing for this. I used to have, uh, I used to have uh, mountains of debt. My ex-husband left me with mountains of debt when he left us, me and my daughter, behind to go marry a woman half of his age. And he ran up credit card bills in other countries where he was gallivanting around, and I got the bill. And, and I, uh, he just left me with so much. But how many of that was unjust? It was unrighteous. And so the Lord delivered me out of debt. How did he do it? Uh, number one, um, through hard work. Number two, through financial, to fi wise financial stewardship. I got Dave Ramsey's book and studied that. And, and number three, supernaturally. So there's, there's a combination of the natural and the supernatural at work together. There's a combination of the natural and the supernatural work together. When you show God you're serious, see, God has no mo real motive to get you out of debt if you're continuing to go out and buy every new pair of Adidas that comes on the market. And you already have six pairs of Adidas from the last six months that you went and bought already. That's called not being a wise steward. Um, my, God wants you to have nice things. doesn't mind you having a new pair of Adidas or a new pair of whatever it is that you like, okay? But what, it, it's about being balanced. It's about being balanced. Okay, we're to have nice things. There's some things we just don't need. There's some things that we don't need that God will still want us to have. In other words, God will bless you and give you the desires of your heart. God will knock your socks off with the blessings that he has for you. But we must be led by the Spirit of the Lord. And so I worked hard. I, I, I became a good financial steward. I taught myself. And there was also a supernatural aspect. So you all know how to steward money. You're, you're very wise people. You know that you're, you need to try to stay within your budget. You know, you, you don't just go out and buy stuff you can't afford because you want it. Amen. If you've got the money for it, great. If you can pay cash for it, that's awesome. But, you know, you don't need to, to, to run up, you know, go to rent -a center and get the biggest screen TV that's there uh, because, you know, you're the, because it's the newest one and the one you bought last year is not quite as big as the one you have this year. That's, you know what I'm saying? You follow me? Amen. We got to be good. The phone number 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. Amen. So that's how I got out of debt, and I've been debt-free ever since. I own one, two, three, four properties that are all debt-free and 23 acres of land. That's all debt-free. Now, some of it has been given to me as an inheritance, and some of it I paid cash for. So I have an anointing for debt cancellation, and I was tempted recently to go into debt over something, and, um, and I've been praying over it, and the Lord has made it very clear he does not want me going into debt. Uh, so, and, and, and I was very tempted to go into debt over something and, and see that temptation is there. Uh, but you know what, if the Lord wants you to have something, he'll provide it for you. And so I, I escaped that attempt. I'm being very honest and transparent with you. I escaped that attempt, uh, really by the mercy of God, because I probably would have just gone for it, uh, based on, uh, based on various other things. See, there's always situations. There's always, um, how do I say this? There's always, there can be God signs and demon signs. Not everything, you know, sometimes things don't work out the way they should. 
and, and, and that's not a sign from God. Other times things are working out like they, like you think they should, and that's not a sign from God. You can't go by signs. You have to follow the Spirit. God will sometimes give you signs, but when you're following the Spirit, you'll see the signs the Spirit wants you to see. When you're just following signs devoid of following the Spirit, you're liable to be deceived by the devil. Amen? Yes, acknowledge God in all your ways and he'll direct your path. It's a good word, sister. Plead from all temptation. Amen? So you can sow a seed. We're going to pray for the supernatural debt cancellation in just a minute. If you want to sow, sow. If you don't want to sow, don't sow. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. PayPal.me slash JenniferLeClaire. And 754-701-2161. Type the word pray. We're going to, we're going to, um, we're going to, uh, uh, I'm just going to tell you about a couple of uh, things I have going on. I'll be in Dallas at the ACPE uh, all next week, and I'll be speaking on Friday at the Global Prophetic Summit. I believe it's around 2 o'clock. Amen. So if you want to, uh, to to meet me, I'm not scheduling. Some of you emailed my office wanting private appointments. I'm not doing that. I cannot guarantee when I'm going to be available. I'm actually part of the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders, and I have responsibilities, and they've not given me a schedule. So at least I commit to you, and you get, uh, and I get pulled out by Cindy or, or Chuck or one of these others to do something that they want me to do, then you get offended with me. Um, so please don't get offended with me if you've emailed my office asking for a private meeting or coffee. It's not that I don't want to meet with you. It's that I cannot commit to you because I've committed to them. If I have free time, I'll post on Facebook and whatever, and maybe we can connect. Amen. You know that I love to connect with you. When I was in Canada, uh, I tried to do that. Sometimes it's out of my control. I just, I, I have to obey the leadership um, of, of the event that I'm at. Uh, so, but I will be there um, all, uh, all week, Monday through Friday, and I'll be speaking Friday at 2, and that'd be a good time to come to my session if you're there in Dallas and say, hey, uh, you know, come around that time. At least I can say hello to you and, uh, and bless you. Amen. Uh, the, uh, the Act Like Men conference is on Saturday. Scott and Ari and uh, Pastor Austin will be uh, there. If you're in South Florida, you know a man that's in South Florida that needs to be more manly, uh, you know, tell him, you know, to get down there. Praise God. Uh, the Activating the Seer's Anointing. Uh, it's going to be on ahop.tv. It's a prophetic impartation. I'll be teaching on the seer's anointing. What is this? Demystifying this and, 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 and stirring that up in you. All prophets, you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. And you don't have to be a seer uh, to see in the spirit. There's an anointing to see just like there's an anointing to prophesy. So you can go to ahop.tv and sign up for that. The Ignite Network's Prophetic Vision for 2018. I'm going to be doing a special presentation live online streaming. Uh, this is not just for Ignite members, but anybody who wants to learn more about the network. You know, we've ignited, we're, we just hit our one year anniversary. We've ignited over 400 prophetic voices in one year. We've put in now several regional leaders. We're installing more and God wants to blow this up in a good way. So if you want to find out more about that right now, you can go to ignitenow.org, but you can also go to uh, the, the, uh, my website, jenniferleclair.org, hit the events button and you'll see uh, a way to register for that. Ignite is a prophetic network, apostolic prophetic network, uh, where you can learn and grow with a company of people that have like precious faith that will, that will, I'm in there teaching, I'm in there uh, commenting, people are, are interpreting dreams, they're praying for one another, it's a real family, and uh, it's growing by leaps and bounds, you're going to want to, to uh, if this sparks interest in you, get involved in it. One of these days I'll do a longer explanation of Ignite, but it's not going to be today. Mentoring in prayer and intercession, uh, these seats are, a lot. yesterday we had just a ton of, 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 of sign-ups, I don't know what uh, I'm not sure what's going on. It could be that others in Ignite are taking uh, the cue um, that I gave them and, and asking them to, uh, to begin to share. You know, if you believe in something, you'll share it. Uh, if you believe in, in the gospel, you'll share the gospel, right? Uh, if you believe in the gospel, you'll share the gospel. If you believe in your network, you'll share uh, about your uh, your network. And so if you're in, if, if you're part of Ignite, be an ambassador. Say, hey, this, this network has changed my life. Uh, I, uh, I recommend you check it out. Why? Because the Lord gave me a vision to raise up a, prof a prophetic generation, and I believe this is going to be one of the most significant moves of God, and it's not no glory toward me at all. Uh, it's all Him, uh, but He's doing something here that's very special. Amen. Uh, and so I, I do have, let me see if this is up yet. Is this up yet? Let's see. 
It's not up yet, but there is a, by Monday there will be a, I've got a free webinar on prayer, getting more prayer answers, and uh, I'm going to release that on Monday so that you can sign up for that. It's free. It's about 30 minutes, uh, a good, strong teaching on why you're not getting more prayer answers and how to correct that. Uh, so you can get a taste of what the mentoring will be like. Uh, it's it's just a short little uh, it's 30 minutes, uh, but you'll be able to get a taste of what what the mentoring program will be like. And this is a very a very basic teaching, but I wanted to be able to uh, reach uh, everybody at every level because here's the here you know if, let's face it, uh, many many of us we go through seasons or get in certain situations where we're not seeing the prayer answer we thought. So why you know why 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 not? Well, there's a reason why. And so I get into that in that webinar. On Monday, remind me if I don't, if I don't, uh, if I don't share that on Monday, remind me to share with you have access to that. Amen. I'll be ready on Monday. Now, yesterday, if you missed it, you're going to want to go to my Facebook Facebook page, facebook.com slash uh, Jennifer LeClaire, and you're going to want to watch the video that I did yesterday on the rise of Christian witches. Uh, we had prayed somewhat along these lines the other day, and you all were like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, yes, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, um, it's real. Uh, and here I have, uh, beware the rise of Christian witches. And I did this uh, yesterday. You can go into my video section. Um, it, uh, it, it's like, it's, 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 re it's reached, I'm trying to see how many people it's reached, a, a crazy number of people. Uh, has it has reached in just a, a few uh, uh, less than 24 hours thousands and thousands and thousands of people like oh my goodness you can go watch that if you missed it uh, you're going to want to share that with your friends I know on Periscope it's hard to, to get replays on stuff but I did a whole teaching so go there as well amen I'm going to get some water now uh, Vanessa can make fun of me for, for you all hearing me gulp water it's her her good opportunity to make fun of me You know, she's always telling me, drink more water, drink more water. I'm drinking water, and now she's picking on me for drinking water. I don't know. It's this this neglection, this rejection she tries to cast on me. I don't know. I think maybe she needs, I think maybe she needs a good, strong rebuke. Amen. No, she says no. You know I'm teasing. You know I'm teasing. Hallelujah. I like to joke. Ministry is very serious. Sometimes you really just need to have a good time. Yeah, deliverance is needed. Yes, Carol, we need to fly you down so you can cast out devils. Out of Prophet Vanessa. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Vanessa is the most amazing person that I know. There's no one more amazing than her. Uh, she's a Proverbs 31 woman. She takes such good care of her husband, her family. Uh, she she works in the business realm and in ministry. Um, there's no one uh, quite like her, uh, and she's an amazing person, and I, I love her dearly, and I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, some folks are bound. They can't even laugh. I know it. I know it. So I'm taking my water. You can hear me gulp, and then she can make fun of me and say, we can hear you gulping and stomping around on your floor. And <laughs> Amen. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to hide behind Sierra and Austin after this. After this. I gulped extra loud. Hope you enjoyed that. Now let's pray. I want to share with you what my spiritual father shared on the Intercessors for Florida website. Amen. You gotta have a sense of humor. I want to share with you what he shared with me. And then I also want to pray for supernatural debt cancellation. I don't have a bunch of scriptures for you. I've just got a, a word of wisdom, okay? And the pounding on the table. Yes. For you. Yes. Amen. I probably just woke up by my neighbors. But you know what? Because I'm I stomp, I dance, I jump when I pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why I can't do a live uh, feed because all you would see was me running back and forth, doing cartwheels, jumping up and down, stomping. You wouldn't actually see me because I'm all over the place. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So last night we were on the, on the Intercessors for Florida call. And if you're in Florida... Uh, you need to be part of this group. Intercessors for Florida is especially powerful. Uh, it's just a, like a network of intercessors. There's, there's no cost to be involved in it. It's just coming together in unity. And, and, and he said this. Uh, yes, cartwheels, praise God. I can stand on my head too. Uh, he said this. He said, you know, sometimes we uh, we look and we see, uh, we, we look at, we, 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 you know, we, we're believing God for a certain thing. And then when the money doesn't come in for what we're believing God for, we say, well, it wasn't God. Well, you know, that is not necessarily true. You know, they, well, God has, you know, he gives provision where there's vision. 
that's true in theory, but there's also this thing called the enemy is opposing you. There's also this thing called the enemy wants to still kill and destroy the word of the Lord that you received so that you'll be bitter, upset, etc., etc. And so you have to discern. You, you cannot go by, oh, well, the money didn't come in, that wasn't God. You've got to war for what belongs to you. You've got to contend for what belongs to you. What does contend mean? It's, a, it's, the, it's the meeting of effort by effort, striving against opposition. Now, we're not striving for provision. We're striving against the opposition to our provision. You understand? We're not, we're, 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 we're so many times, you know, you ask the Lord and you, you think it's a done deal and you think this is, this is, this is the will of the Lord and you get 15 prophecies saying, yes, 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 yes. And then you meet with all this opposition. It, the contend, according to the, uh, it's the uh, International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. It means the meeting of effort by effort, striving against opposition, sometimes physically as in battle, or with horses, sometimes orally, sometimes spiritually. Amen? And so we, 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 sometimes, you know, the Bible says we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but guess what? Sometimes the flesh and blood is being influenced by a demon. So in that sense, we are wrestling against flesh and blood. It's just that, that, that it's a demon. So people, people will demonically, there are demonic gatekeepers. Let me put it this way. There are demonic gatekeepers. There are demonic gatekeepers. There are demonic gatekeepers over the education mountain uh, where you're trying to get into this, this uh, educational program so you can better your life, better your skills. And somehow, because you're a Christian, they've discriminated against you. They'll not say that. They'll find some dumb excuse because they're an atheist and you're a Christian, and they know it, so they don't let you into their educational program, or in the workplace, they don't give you the job, they don't give you the job, and you know you're qualified, you know you're better qualified than the next guy, the next girl, but for whatever reason, they want to give you this bogus excuse, why, 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 that's bogus, it's bogus, if the Lord has told you something belongs to you, you need to contend for it, you need to fight for it, the, you know, the Bible speaks of the good fight of faith, you know, it, we're fighting, the enemy is opposing God's will in your life. You don't need to just give up, say, well, you know, this is harder than I thought it would be. This is not working out the way I planned. I guess I missed God. The enemy always wants you to think you missed God. He, doesn't, he wants to, to confuse you. He wants you to see things the way that they're not. God wants you to see things as he sees them. What do you see? I see prosperous people who are going to fight for what belongs to them. Who are going to pray like Daniel prayed and contend, 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 fight, 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 fight. Amen? So let's fight for the supernatural debt cancellation. There's many things we could fight for. I want to pray. Get an agreement. Now, I, I want to preface this. You, you need to repent. If you've gotten yourself into debt by very poor decisions, you need to repent. Some of you are not in debt because of poor decisions. Some of you are in debt because of some great horrible calamity, some mega hospital stay. Your insurance didn't cover it. Some kind of horrible accident. Or, or some kind of unforeseen circumstance where people you, you were partnering with left you holding the bag. So there's, there's things like that. But, you know, if you've gotten yourself into debt because of the lust of the eyes, you know, you just need to repent. God's not mad at you. You know, he, he just, he wants you free. It's just, it's no different than, than, uh, it's no different than, uh, you know, people who get a devil because they were practicing sin. They got a, they got a, a spirit of lust because they watched pornography. Well, God still loves them. He wants them free. So just repent. Just change the way you think. Begin to look at money the way you're supposed to look at money. Amen? The Babylonian system is wicked. They charge you so much interest, you never get out of debt. I mean, unless you hit a windfall, dear God. Unless God does it supernaturally. Some, some, sometimes there's, no really, there's really no hope of getting out of debt unless you get some kind of supernatural intervention. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some of you, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm looking at your comments. I don't want to presume, so I'm not going to say anything. So we're going to, we're going to pray now. We're going to fight for what belongs to us. God's will is for you to be debt free. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of God. God, we repent. We repent right now, Jesus. We repent for allowing ourselves to get into that. Your word tells us. To owe no man nothing except to love him. Your word tells us that you have the gold, the silver, the cattle, it all belongs to you, that you've given us the power to create wealth, to establish your covenant in the earth. Your, your word says that we are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, that we're to lend to many nations and never have to borrow. Father, I thank you that we can, we can receive your forgiveness for, for allowing ourselves to get into unnecessary debt. 
for, for buying things that, that you didn't tell us to buy, for pursuing uh, things that you didn't tell us to pursue. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We, we receive your forgiveness. Some of you are condemned over this. You need to receive the forgiveness of God. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my time. I'm not going to labor this long, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to rush it either. Some of you feel condemned because you're in debt. The enemy has condemned you. I've made financial mistakes in my life, invested in wrong things and seen it blown up. And the enemy then condemned me. So, so you could have spent that money on your child's college education and you blew it because you made a bad investment. Don't allow the enemy to condemn you. There is nothing that will ever come out of my mouth by the Holy Spirit or just out of my own spirit that will ever seek to condemn you. It might challenge you. You might feel conviction, but I will never convict you. Jesus does not convict us. That is not the heart of God. If you're receiving anything I ever say as, as condemnation, then you're allowing the devil to twist it in your mind because there is nothing coming in me that wants to, con to condemn you or anybody else. I used to struggle with condemnation to the point it was almost crippling. I walked around in condemnation all the time. I will never condemn somebody. I'm not judging anybody either. Amen. I'll judge sin, but I'm not judging a person. No condemnation. So receive the forgiveness of the Lord. We receive your forgiveness, God, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we come to you. We come boldly to your throne of grace. There's going to be testimonies from this. Let me tell you, there's going to be testimonies from this. I don't ever do this on Periscope and Facebook. There's going to be testimonies. If you have a testimony, in, email my office, info at jenniferleclair.org. I do suggest you sow a seed towards your debt cancellation if you, if you really, if you're really to ask the Lord what to sow, because that is how we, that's how, that's how we unlock that. I've seen it over and over. Father, we thank you that you told us in your word to owe no man anything except but to love them. And I thank you, Lord, whether you want to deliver us from debt little by little or do it in all one fell swoop. I thank you, Lord, that your delivering power is greater than the power of mammon. Your, 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 your truth is greater than any bondage that we might have fallen into by our own ignorance or by our own poor choices. So we thank you that you forgive us. We thank you that you cleanse us from this unrighteousness. You, we thank you, Lord. We're committing this day to be better stewards of our finances. Lord, teach us. If we have to enroll in a class or read a book, we're willing to do our part, whatever it takes. That we don't make these same mistakes again. That we're not deceived by, by poor investments or whatever it is that caused this trouble and issue in our lives. And Father, I take authority over debt. I have authority over debt because I've conquered it. And I take authority over debt in Jesus' name. And I speak to the mountains of debt in your life. Come on, agree with me now. Speak to the mountains of debt in your life. I speak to the mountains of debt in your life and I command them to be cast into the sea now in Jesus' name. I command that mountain of debt to melt away in the name of Jesus. We abolish and blow up every mountain of debt, whether it's from hospital bills, legal bills, student loans, every form and fashion of debt. Because the enemy, oh Jesus, I just saw this with the Lord, showed me this. The enemy is using debt as a weapon against you. It's not just a bondage, it's a weapon. Are you hearing me? It's not just a bondage, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. It's a weapon because it cuts your dreams to shreds. Many of you, you want to go back to school. You want to, to pursue some great thing God's called you to do, but you cannot, you cannot do it because of the debt. You're strapped down working overtime because of the debt. The enemy is not, that's a good revelation. It's not just a bondage, it's a weapon against you. It's a weapon against your future. Somebody needs to email that to me before I forget it. Somebody, somebody needs to email that to me before I forget. It's a weapon. So the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So we command this weapon of debt to be canceled and abolished. We say debt will not prosper against us. How, how ironic. The opposite of, of prosperity is debt and lack. I break that spirit of poverty off you in Jesus' name. That cycle of lack in your life, I break it and bind it. I destroy it. I abolish it. I blow it up to smithereens in the name of Jesus. We take authority over debt. We will not bow to mammon. We will not serve mammon. We will not do it. We will serve you, Jesus, because we love you. And you love us. And we're in this together. We stand together. Amen. And amen. All right, let's go back into worship. I went about five minutes over. You know, I used to do this call. It was 30 minutes. And at 6.30, I was out. But then when I resigned from Charisma, I, re I, I was released from a lot of time pressure. Because I had staff that would come in at 8.30, and I had to get all their work ready for them before they came in. Now, I don't have that pressure, and I'm able to press in more to what the Spirit of God wants to do. I'm not on a time limit like I was. I still try to keep it. I'm not trying to keep you on all day, 
but I am trying to be led by the Spirit. Amen? I am trying to be led by the Spirit. So continue to confess that you're debt-free, even if things don't look that way in your life. Some of you will, I'm telling you, some of you will see immediate supernatural debt cancellation. Tomorrow or Monday when the banks open up, you'll, or the credit, you'll find windfalls. Every time I do this, I get some kind of windfall. I, you know, I don't know why I think the Lord is just blessing me for the obedience of helping others get set free because he doesn't want you in debt. Some of you will continue to con confess it. Thanks, Karen, for sending me that email. That's a that's a great that's a great meme there. Listen, continue to confess it. Don't 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 go look at your bank account on Monday or whatever your bills and say, well, that didn't work. Well, because you know what? When you confess that, guess what happens? It ain't gonna work because you just agreed with the devil. So to so, so get lack out of your mouth, get bondage out of your mouth, get the words I can't afford it out of your mouth, get it out of your mouth, and begin to speak what God says about you. He says everything you put your hand to will prosper. Get your mouth straight. Your life will get straight. Remember what we prayed yesterday. Amen. So continue to confess it. Listen, I confess that I was debt free for years before I became debt free. Some of you will get debt free. And I'm telling you, there'll be a supernatural testimonies. Others of you, it'll happen in a month or two. Others of you, it might be, you know, it, it might. I don't know. It's, it's God's sovereignty and his timing. But when he, he might be waiting to see something in you. But the prayer has been released and the seed has been sowed. And every time I do this, I see supernatural debt cancellation amen so continue to confess the word of god let's go back into worship i love you guys i am going to be having a, an early dinner or coffee with scott and Ari later and uh tomorrow i'm going to be secluding myself in my house to rest and pray and seek the lord and do some writing uh, but i might uh, i might break out at some point and do a periscope or something uh to uh to 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 uh to um uh, based on what the lord shows me um, the Lord's been dealing me about being better on media. Amen. Doing more media to bless the people and to, to share what he's sharing with me. So bless you. Let's go back into worship. I love you guys. Please pray for me. I need your prayers. Pray for Jennifer.com. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. I love your confessions. Charlene Underwood, you are a blessing to the body of Christ. I, I, I honor you, Charlene, and I appreciate you. I just saw your confession on there. You're such a cheerleader for... So many of you are cheering each other on. I love this community because you're cheering each other on. Felicia Tucker, I'm so glad you're back. Carol, I love you. Amen. Some of you I don't know personally. Others I know better. But I love you guys. Amen. God bless you. Let's go back into worship. Thanks, Janice. I counsel you to buy gold refined in the fire. I counsel you. 